fourth edition was not all bad. Adopt and enhance this 4E rule for your 5E table like I did, right now on Riches and Liches. Welcome adventurers, I'm Rich and this is Riches and Liches, where it's all things Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop roleplaying. This is 6 Minute Secrets, easy to consume and to the point tips, tricks, house rules and homebrew, all designed to enhance your game in just 6 minutes or less. 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons is considered by the vast majority of players as the worst edition in the history of the game, but even this ugly duckling is not without its charms. Today I will share one of my favorite and few 4E rules that I've adopted and modified for my own table. Chapters in the scrub bar below and description if you want to fast forward. I'm a firm believer that one of the most basic traits of a good dungeon master lies in their ability to properly communicate, inform, and generally provide clear visual and auditory cues to the party. This obviously comes in the form of detailed creature, room, and environment descriptions, and most dungeon masters certainly understand this and do their best to set the mood, to convey power or weakness, and to provide subtle clues and hints. All of this with an eye toward allowing the party to imagine and visualize what their characters see through their characters' eyes. These cues should give important details and convey important information, but should do so in a way where the players can make informed choices with information that is reasonably, but not absolutely accurate. But oftentimes when combat starts, that information is lacking, and a good simple prop can really enhance the game in this regard. For the combat phase of the game, one of my favorite homebrew enhancements borrows from the bloodied condition found in 4E. For those that are not aware, the fourth edition of Dungeons and Dragons had a very simple rule that stated a monster was bloodied anytime it was under half its hit points. So a 40 hit point creature with 19 hit points is bloodied. Super simple, easy. At my table, we take this super simple concept and we expand upon it, again, all in order to provide the party with proper status information. I went out and bought colored discs of yellow, red, and black. You can use poker chips or crafting supplies. They are generally very easy to find, very inexpensive. So for like five bucks, you can use these discs to communicate combat status updates. Any uninjured creature or party member, no disc, simple. Any damage above 50%, they get a yellow disc, which designates them as injured. Any damage under 50%, but above 10%, red disc, they are bloodied, and for any creature or party member that's at 10% or less of their maximum hit points, that miniature goes on a black disc, signifying they are on death's door. I have found that having these visual status indicators is especially helpful. It gives just the right amount of information, the level of which you might reasonably be able to tell by examining your enemies in a realistic combat situation through the eyes of the character and doing so without breaking immersion and giving the actual hit points. I really hope no DMs do that. And depending upon how strict your table is in regard to metagaming, I mean, is it okay at your table for your barbarian who is 60 feet away on the tactical combat map to turn to the cleric at the table and out of turn tell them that they're almost dead and that they need to be healed next? Is it okay at your table for the healer at your table to ask each player how many hit points they each have so that they can heal with maximum efficiency? Every table is different, but if any of that is metagaming, I mean, to be clear, it is definitely metagaming, but your level of enforcement of that metagaming may allow it. But if that is a level of metagaming that you want to try and reduce, then these injury status tests also have the added benefit of reducing that at your table, or at least allowing the dungeon master an easier time in trying to restrict it as the discs provide that reasonable, but not absolute level of information. So the cleric can just look on the table and see who is injured. Yes, you can go out and buy a full set of status and condition rings that do all this and more. And I use condition rings at my table, but this is an easy and inexpensive means, an entryway, if you will, by which to convey basic and reasonable combat information to your players. And that's it. Another six minute secret in record time, but five minute secret just doesn't have the same ring. <laughs> Please consider following on Twitter at Riches and Liches, checking our Patreon and Discord. 
And if you feel like I earned it, maybe sub and ring that bell to help me grow this amazing community. If you have a question, game, or rules problem you'd like spotlighted on 6 Minute Secrets, comment down below, post in our Discord, email, or hit me up on Twitter. Thanks for listening, and until next time, remember, the only limitation at your table is your imagination.